Welcome everybody to what I hope will be a pretty fun video. We're going to be checking out the Olimex ESP32 board and I'll get into some of the details about that later. But I want to take a step back. Most of you are familiar with the Arduino Uno. This happens to be a clone, your basic 16 megahertz board with some uh, GPIO pins, you know, 14 or so pins that you can use. And, and just uh, this is the everyday maker board. And some of you may be familiar with the one that started taking the world by storm called the ESP8266. This one um, runs way faster. This is 16 megahertz. This is 80. Uh, this has a lot more RAM and you know the, the ESP32 has a lot more RAM and, and stuff like that has built in Wi-Fi and, uh, and that's really cool. But the latest one that has been really taking the maker scene by storm is the ESP32 and I have a couple of examples here. I have one that has a uh, built-in 18650 battery shield. I have a generic one that has pre-soldered header pins and I have this one here that has an OLED screen built in and the deal with these is they are higher end. Now you can still get something like this for about six bucks your basic board but these things are 160 megahertz they have 512k of ram and that might not mean much to you until you realize that this has 2k of ram uh, this has 16 megabytes of storage compared to this has 32 kilobytes of storage and you know this thing has built in it has built in wi-fi built in bluetooth built in touch sensors has built in can bus 18 or 36 gpio pins it has digital analog converters all kinds of fun stuff built into these boards and that's why makers love them they're really cool really versatile but the one thing that i think has been missing from the esp8266 and the esp32 is ethernet if you were to take all this stuff away in general if i want to do something that's important i want it to be wired i mean wi-fi is good it's getting better but the the 2.4 gigahertz band is crowded and you know if I absolutely need something to be reliable then I absolutely want to wire it and for the most part there have been two ways that I've done that I've taken an Arduino Mega and popped one of these shields on there and you'll notice I said Arduino Mega and the reason for that is because the Uno has less RAM than the Mega and so basically and we'll get into this with the other one but basically by the time you get the pub sub client which I use a lot for MQTT and the basic Ethernet libraries you're basically out of RAM in fact on this one the Nano it has a really cool Ethernet shield and this thing is a couple of bucks and basically you know you could build a setup like this for eight dollars or so where you get this really cool screw shield and you get an Arduino Nano and you get this Ethernet shield but it has so little memory that you can't use it for a lot of the things that you'd actually want to use it for. At least I can't use it for a lot of things that I would actually want to use it for. So, in fact, when I use an Uno or a Nano to do Ethernet, basically the only thing I can do with them is get requests. And that's fine. I mean, I'm sure other people have uses for them, but I want to be able to use MQTT. I want to be able to build more advanced things and, and use them as true IoT devices. And it's really hard to do that when you just don't have enough memory and you just don't have enough processing power these things all of these together don't have the horsepower to negotiate HTTPS requests which means that you can't truly secure your data if you want to go straight from this to the internet now I have some workarounds and I use Raspberry Pis and all that to make that stuff happen but there's a better way and up until recently if you wanted to add Ethernet to something like this you'd go back and there's about four or five posts on the internet where people have taken modules that were designed for the nano and you know or, or basic arduino modules and they've hacked them together and they've added some resistors and and you know did all kinds of hack job stuff and sort of kind of got it to work or you can use this new ish not totally new but new ish product by olimax and what's really cool about this is that this is not just an ESP32 with Ethernet. It is an ESP32 with power over Ethernet. 
And we're going to get into that in a minute, but let me just give you the, the, the quick rundown. They have this, um, the ESP32 chip. You can program it with USB. There's a couple buttons. I think there's a reset button. There's also a user button that can be used, uh, I think, inside of your sketches. It has the ESP32, and it has an SD card slot on the bottom. And so there's a lot of stuff packed into this little board. You get all the advances. You get the... Um, you get the 160 megahertz and the 16 megs of RAM or 16 megs of flash and 512 megs of RAM and all that stuff packed in this little board. And so I'm going to show you a little bit more about it. Okay, so I ran around my shop and I grabbed a couple of little components. And uh, this is a PoE switch. And basically the way that it works is that you plug this wire is just going into the network jack on the wall. And then in this case, every one of these ports can supply power. Uh, if you don't have something like that, this is a PoE router, and some routers uh, have these ports on there that can actually supply power from your router. There's also things called PoE injectors, and this is, a, I think, a 24-volt one, but in general, you've got one wire that goes back to your LAN, and then another one that will go to your device. And what makes it so great is that if you're going to take the time to run Ethernet, you might as well have your Ethernet also be able to power the device and you can see that this one wire is doing all the powering of this thing now it does have a, a battery you could use this as a battery backup it has battery management for charging and all that kind of stuff but basically this is brilliant this is the way to go for a small iot device to be able to just plug this thing in and run one power cord and know that you're going to have reliable power and reliable network connection. Now there has been one thing that I kind of skipped over and it is this external port right here and uh, let me show you. I'm not going to plug it in at the moment but they have a ton of little modules that come with these little cables and basically you can get their little modules and you can get things like relays or in this situation this is a looks like a 2.8 inch LCD screen and you can plug in the little thing here and plug in down there and have a screen. And I like the idea that it's flexible. I like the idea that if I was building my own enclosure, I could, you know, position this up higher and stick the board down the bottom and all that. And we're going to play with this a little bit more later. But overall, this is a very cool product. I don't care what you say. I don't care how much you like your Wi-Fi. Ethernet is better pretty much every time. This is 100 megabit Ethernet, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. The other thing that's important about this board is it's isolated up to 3,000 volts DC, which means that there's very little chance that your PoE thing is going to damage your board, and there's very little chance that whatever you hook up to this thing is going to go back and damage your PoE port up to 3,000 volts DC, which I think is pretty cool. So the next thing we're going to look at is some software, and we're going to look at just how this thing works as a whole. Before we upload the software, I was poking around and I wanted to get an idea of some of the other modules that were available on the company's website. And uh, this one kind of stuck out to me. This is an addressable opto-isolated relay module. And what's so cool about it is that these are actually stackable. So you can not only add four relays, but you could add many, it basically said that in their words, as many inputs and outputs as you want. You can keep stacking these things on top of each other and doing a lot more relays. There's also a two relay board that I think is it's way cheaper. It's only like six euro, six ninety five or something like that. Uh, there's a VGA interface that works on that same cable that also gives you a PS2 uh, keyboard interface for your computer, a GPS interface. This is a, an environmental like CO2 sensor, infrared temperature, the standard BME that has uh, humidity temperature and I think pressure. Uh, this is, I'm pretty sure it's a compass. There's just all kinds of different sensors and modules that you can add. And obviously you can use the, G the GPIO. There's a Wii nunchuck. Uh, obviously you can use the, the GPIOs of the ESP32, but you can also add these plug and play modules and just, just get a really nice clean interface. I love RFID if you watch this channel so you know that. And then I thought this was pretty cool. There's things like EKG kits and stuff like that where you can just pop it on there and, and you get, it looks like a RS-232 input on it. Um, there's just all kinds of really cool modules that you can add to this stuff to expand your ESP32 board and that's pretty sweet. 
So just to give you guys an idea, there are two versions of this board. There's the one that we have that has the 3000 volts isolation that on Amazon is $32.95. I'll post a link to that. There's also a cheaper version of it that does not have the isolation and the board's a little smaller and that's uh, $24.95. And so just want to let you know those are out there. If we look at the product page, they have a well thought out product page. It's just got all of the uh, statistics and the features of the board, the documentation, uh, some CAD files and stuff to showing you the hardware itself. And then there's the software. And so there's they link to some specific examples or they have a whole uh, GitHub page. And we can look here and see that if you want, you can not just do it for Arduino, but there's stuff for the ESP uh, IDF or the Arduino IDE. I've been using the Arduino IDE. So there's web server demos and all your typical demos. And I will say overall, they are, uh, they're very well written. When you look at these sketches, they, there, there's not a ton of commenting, but for the most part, everything is clean. Everything is nice. When you go to the ones about the, uh, the screens and stuff, you know, they, they do, they tell you what they're doing. They give you some information, and and it's a very well written, clean, basic example sketch that can get you going in the right direction. So I'm going to fire up one of those, and we'll see how it works. Okay, so I spent a good bit of time playing around with their different example sketches, and they're pretty cool. If you think about it, you don't really need example sketches on how to connect to Wi-Fi, but they will show you how to do that. But Ethernet is different on an ESP32. There aren't many examples, so they show you how to connect, how to find your MAC address how to find your IP address. You can ping this and you'll get a response. I have it set up so that it would go on the web and visit example.com and I'm getting all the feedback, getting the web page down there and then I have it reading the SD card, which the way I have it set up right now is you're using that built-in button that's on the ESP32 to read the SD card when you push it. And it comes in here and it's probably easier to see from the code itself. But basically I put a Raspberry Pi SD card in there. It read it, eight gig card, gave me some information about it. And what's cool about it is that it's right, it can write to the files and read the files and, and move files and copy files and all that kind of stuff. And so it's pretty sweet. It does the things that you'd want an example sketch to do. And so overall, I really can't say enough good stuff about this thing for if you need a device that's small and has PoE and has Ethernet, like it's the way to go. Uh, the battery backup stuff, all of that's just a kind of a cool bonus. And so, yeah, I like the board. It's sweet. I'm going to use it in a project and hopefully I'll make a video on that soon.